Uh, this is Chen Hu. Now I'm a postdoc in uh, UC Berkeley and the Berkeley Lab. Today I will uh, introduce uh, the how we use the uh, NERSC resources to do the material science. So today my talk is about this uh, optical response in the uh, Van der Waals heterostructures. So as we know that uh, if we uh, stack two different two diff uh, two, two dimensional materials together, we can form these uh, heterobilayers. layers. And the interactions between these two layers is a key quantity to understand the, the, the interlayer uh, uh, physics in these uh, material systems. So here I will focus on these uh, optical interactions between the two layers, which is formed by the Thomson Dysoni and also the Mooney Dysoni systems. So we will follow a very classical uh, setup, which is called the pump rule setup, which means that we firstly pump the one layer, the Mooney Dysoni layer. And after some time delay, and we group uh, another layer, the, the, uh, the Thompson Dysona layer. And uh, then the proof signal can give us the, the, the response or the dynamics between these two layers. So the uh, experiment usually people use is uh, called this uh, ultra fast optical spectroscopy to measure this uh, interlayer dynamics of the optics. So the experimentalists already found that this kind of dynamics between the two layers is very fast. It's less than one picoseconds. So how to understand this? A very common explanation is based on a so-called independent particle picture, which means that we firstly have one layer, and we firstly pump one layer, such as the Mooney Dysona layer, and we can create an electron hole, and these free carriers will move from one layer to another layer, then give us this dynamic. But this kind of picture is uh, conceptually insufficient. This is because that, uh, the, as we know, that the electron hole in the system is not independent. It will form a, a exciton, which is electron hole pair uh, bounded by the Coulomb interactions, because one is negative, one is uh, positive. So here, what we need to study is uh, it's not an independent uh, charge transfer. It's a, uh, it's, we, should use, we should study the exciton, electron hole pair, how it from this uh, interlayer to the uh, interlayer, which cross the two layers. But this uh, study is uh, very uh, theoretically challenging. This is because that we need to handle both the many body cytonic effects, which uh, combines the electron hole, and also this uh, real time dynamic physics at the same time. This is uh, both of these two physics are very computational, time consuming. But the NERSC resource can give us this. Uh, ability to study this, and then we develop a new method called this uh, time-dependent adiabatic GW method, which will study this uh, dynamics between these uh, excited states. Okay, so let's see the results. So this is the first, this is the experiment result. You can see that uh, if we uh, fit this uh, racing behavior with the exponential, we can see that this uh, optical dynamics is about 205 seconds. And let's see our uh, simulation results. So we can see that uh, this uh, red curve here is uh, we use our TDGW method, which will include this uh, electron hole coupling or the excitonic effects. We can see that we can get this uh, racing trend very well, uh, agreeing well, very well with this experiment. And we can even qualitative, uh, we quantitatively get the result very close, which is about 300 seconds. But if we neglect this electron hole coupling, and we get this black curve, which is so you can see that it's a qualitatively disagree with this experiment. This tells us that this uh, mm, the excitonic effects or the electron hole coupling actually play a very important role in the optical dynamics between uh, layers. Okay, so uh, and I will uh, thank my uh, professor Stephen Louis and also uh, my collaborator Dr. Mitten Nack, Dr. Yang Hao Chan. And if you have any interest about this work, you can refer to our uh, reference and you can also email to me.